Last week, my friend Joe and I took my rebuilt Ferrari on a near two and a half thousand mile trip to Italy and back. Here's a little vlog of how it went. All right, Joe, let's see what you can do. Go. <laughs> <laughs> and in fairness, the car was faultless on day one as we both got to open her up on the tails a bit, and yeah, it was nice. <laughs> How was it? <laughs> Whilst, of course, legally keeping to all the speed limits. 50 miles an hour! <laughs> Naturally, when you enter a tunnel, it's only right to roll down the windows and let it rip. Whilst it's tough to get a gauge on the force from behind the camera, you can kind of get the idea watching Joe try to initially hold the camera steady when I kick it down. <laughs> so yep, off to a good start, and fear not, toll boost won't exempt either. Pretty addictive and kept us entertained for our eight hour slog down to Chamonix where the fun did have to be put on hold as the weather turned. With the car performing valiantly and no opportunity to put the foot down, the most noteworthy story was Gerald, the bug who joined us on our journey all the way from Dijon to Chamonix. Long flight home for the little fella. The scenery around Chamonix was spectacular, being set into the mountains and with such a low cloud line. Around 6pm local time, we pulled into the hotel for what had been a fun first day with the car. Full day done, just arrived in Chamonix. Just under 600 miles we've completed and the car was faultless. It's better to say it's drive, pretty faultless. Yeah, man. Um, Cruise at a very nice speed, made it very good progress, pretty comfortable as well, no back pains or anything like that. So yeah, 10 out of 10 for the car today. Tomorrow off to Selvio Pass, off to have a nice dinner, swim in the pool and a, a beer or 10 tonight. Then yeah, Selvio Pass, then down to Marinello tomorrow. So see you in Selvio Pass tomorrow then. New day here, going through the Mont Blanc tunnel into Italy. So only right. I don't know if there's speed cameras in here, so they might have to be a bit careful. Oh, she sounds amazing! We both quite like this girl, don't we? She's, uh, she's an absolute beast. Overnight, I had realised that the journey time to Stelvia Pass, then film there and then travel down to Maranello was unrealistic. So sadly, Stelvia Pass will have to wait for another time, perhaps with a different Italian car. We opted to travel to Padua where our friend Callum was with his fiance for a wedding. So we agreed to meet up for a drink there instead. I'm uh, making good progress on day two already. Well, an hour away from Padua now, aren't we? Just going, going all right, engine's absolutely fine. No issues in that sense. We've noticed um, the under tray at the back of the car has actually come loose though, so we're gonna have to sort that out a bit later and probably actually get a new under tray. Um, Cause it's hanging down a little bit, which is a bit annoying. It's not an area we've touched or checked, but yeah, definitely need to get that sorted. So for now, we're what, an hour and a bit away. So I'm locking your mirror. We're an, hour, <laughs> we're an hour or so away from Padua and then we're gonna have a proper look and I'll show you what we mean, but yeah, definitely need sorting. But we have done, I think, about 500 miles. The lady did point it out. We did check underneath, but we didn't check the back. Everything, all the under trays were on fine, but yeah, definitely seems to be an issue with the back. And you can event, you can occasionally hear the whoop, 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 can't you? So yeah, we'll get that sorted, but first let's get to Padua and we'll look then. All right, Joe's getting a bit self-conscious. He's not saying much on camera. So Joe, 
Talk to me. How's yeah, the car? I do apologise. First of all, I want to say thank you very much for taking me on this journey with you. I'm a big <laughs> Sorry, fan man. of the channel. I've watched every episode. Half and last about 15. <laughs> I not get around to finishing that Aston some point. But, um, <laughs> um, car's lovely. Um, I think you mentioned yesterday uh, you've kind of got that extra prestige with it as opposed to some of the others. Yeah, it feels, it feels like a bit like imposter syndrome, doesn't it? Sort of in this car. Strange. Like, in the Aston, I didn't really get it, but in this car, it really feels like we shouldn't be driving it. And like, Every time we, we just pulled into service station, we get so many stairs, don't we? You see the heads turn and the car well. Yeah, they're like, oh, like, oh look, look at these young prats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's almost like a go-kart driving it. Uh, I know it sounds very cliche, but... No, I mean, it's right. Like, the steering's so actually, sharp, isn't it, and so accurate. The brakes are ridiculously sharp. The first kind of 15 minutes or so, it was, it was a lot. I was quite anxious, but that's mainly just because... A first time driving abroad. Yeah. Um, obviously trying to work out the indicators and. Yeah, Joe's never driven on this side of the road. The indicators are in a weird spot. It's and, all and a it's bit a strange. Nice car and it'd be really embarrassing to take it abroad and within five minutes prank it. To yeah, I don't, I don't want to rebuild this car again, Joe. So make sure, make sure you keep it on the road, not in the hedge. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we ended up not checking the issue until the next morning as we were a bit pressed for time but having explored Padua, probably the nice Italian area we visited, had a drink with Callum, we headed back to the car. Some of the OG subscribers might well recognise Callum in fact from when he helped me fit the windscreen for the DB11. Joe, humor, humor the people, lift up your sunglasses. <laughs> what have I do? Oh, Look at the marks on the side of his head. <laughs> I've got a big head alright. <laughs> This left us with just a short 90 minute drive down to Marinello where you could see the car theme was pretty strong. The hotel featuring various Italian classics and even the race cars of Stanguilini. We walked into Sassuolo, grabbed a beer in the plaza and watched the Champions League before calling it a night. The very next morning we inspected the damage and this turned out to be below the rear bumper. Thankfully, I did bring tools and various bits with me, including duct tape, so I attempted to patch it up for now. This was awkward to do and things got personal between the Ferrari and me as I got caught with a hit to the head. But sometimes you've just got to laugh at how ridiculous this is. It's a bit nicer on the lift. <laughs> Not expecting this to get very far at all. <laughs> You see, it's completely ripped out this section here. So I'm just trying to hold it down. But my guess is it won't even get us five kilometers to a, the Ferrari Museum, but we'll see. The tape did hold to my surprise and we looked around the Ferrari Museum, which was fascinating. Seeing Ferraris down to bare metal and all the chassis structure, the engines alongside the cars they were fitted to, and even a one-off build, the KC23. Being an F1 fan though, that section of the tour was bound to be my favourite as they display cars from different eras next to each other. This was an easy way to view the development of F1, particularly in terms of safety. They even had the old engines on display. I watch a lot of videos on engines as I just find them to be incredible feats of engineering, so I really enjoyed seeing these in the flesh. There's a simulator experience there, but at the dear price of 30 euros for seven minutes, we opted to watch this guy spend about five of his in the gravel quality. The next stop was Florence where we dined at the infamous Trattoria restaurant Bala Market before looking around the town for a bit too. I uh, just been to Florence, we had a nice meal. Uh, you had, what do you have? You had, you a have? bit of ravioli. A ravioli, I had a carbonara, <laughs> had some chips with it. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Classic Brits. Um, then we went, went and visited a couple of touristy sites, they were really nice. Um, when I last checked, the tape was still on, miraculously. Although getting out of the car park was a bit of a steep incline, we had a bit of a crunch, so it might it might have gone now, but we'll see. We'll, we'll check that properly when we get there. Yeah, on to Pisa now. Quick stop in there. Obviously, get a much needed photo with the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and then we're going off to tonight's combination, that's Spezia, which I can't wait to get the drone out and show you what it looks like because it looks awesome in the photos. But yeah, next stop, Pisa. Following a short drive to Pisa, we inspected the rear tray again and to my dismay, the crunch we heard wasn't good. The tray was really drooping down and I had to keep refitting tape before most journeys. Nonetheless, we got to Pisa, stared at a building that appeared to be leaning over a bit. Joe wanted a picture in front of it, which we nailed, before heading to the hotel in La Spezia. Set up in the hills, it was clearly a popular wedding venue and they were setting up for one whilst we were staying there. The food was allegedly the best in town and it didn't disappoint. All this whilst getting to enjoy the views out to the ocean from up in the hills. 
it was sensational and thankfully being the off-season it really didn't cost us much either. The next day we had coffee and played some pool before following the coffee shop manager's recommendation for lunch. <laughs> this was a spot overlooking the ocean so we had some mussels and calamari before heading into town to do some souvenir shopping. This was just so we wouldn't be in trouble with our better halves on returning. <laughs> However, attention then turned back to the car. Tell me what's happening here, Alex. Uh, so it's obviously just getting worse and it's really dragging now. So I'm just gonna try to use some wire cutters to cut it off. Just so it doesn't keep making a racket. Needs replacing anyway, so it's not quite keeping it on. Obviously, wire cutters aren't really the tool for the job, but it was the best I had with me at the time. Following a bit more surgery to the rear of the car, we carried on the trip with the next stop, Monte Carlo. Once we checked in, we got ready to head on out. Did you really go to Monte Carlo if you didn't visit the casino? It's been on my bucket list to drive a particularly bougie car up to the bollards and be allowed to park up right outside the front entrance. I obviously can't afford to keep owning a Ferrari, but everyone else there that night didn't know this, so it was quite funny to enjoy the high life for a moment. And watching plenty of people pose in front of the car for photos. Incredible. After ticking that off, we went inside and it was a beautiful venue for both of us to lose a few hundred euros. How convincingly we lost the house was clearly still troubling Joe the next morning. And our longest day of driving lay ahead as we would drive from Monte Carlo all the way up France to Reims where we'd be staying the night. We went past Marseille, Lyon, Dijon, Troyes, before finally arriving into Reims. To be completely honest with you, this is where it all gets a bit hazy. We wandered into town for a big final night and naturally with the Rugby World Cup on in France at the time, we stumbled into some rugby fights, more specifically Welsh ones, and it all descended into a heavy night. So sore were our heads the next morning, we accidentally slept in and rushed to Calais to get the train back. We did make the train, but we didn't film any of this section. And well, all that was last week now. We've had a few days to recover. The car was obviously performing better than Joe and I were on that final day. So yeah, all went well, just about caught the train. That journey just realized a second ago that we've lost one of these caps. So need to get another one of those ordered. But other than that, I've had the parking sensors arrive to fit on the front bumper. And I've also been sourcing a rear bumper to fit under here. Turns out the white bumper that you see, the white section and the black section are all one piece. So I have to replace the whole thing, which is fine because we've got this crack here anyway, which was already there. It's just kind of expanded with the sort of waffling of the wind, I guess. Um, so yeah, I've sort of found another one online, so we'll have to see, but hopefully I'll get those all sorted. And then it will just be a case of fitting them onto the car, but it's a couple hours work probably. So I'm not even gonna bother filming that, but once the car's properly done and properly ready to be sold, I'll then do a little review of the car, just things that have annoyed me and things that haven't, but you might've noticed a car behind me. Well, this we've got coming up in the future. So hopefully we'll look out for that, but I'm gonna be away for a week or so. And then quite a bit at the end of October as well, I'm away for a couple of weeks. But this car, well, you're gonna have to wait to see what's wrong with that, but as you can see, I've got the boot lid open because there's a problem with that. So a little spoiler for you if you've actually watched the video this far, that we've got coming up on the channel. And of course the Mustang, we're gonna get that finished too. And then hopefully this is all in one year. We've obviously got the Range Rover Classic still parked up and we're gonna be putting an original V8 back into that car to make it period correct. The diesel just doesn't work. I hate it, it's slow, it's lethargic. Yeah, I just hate it. So it's gonna be back in with a V8 to join this car here and this car here in the VA club and my Range Rover parked outside, my green one. But this one I'm quite excited about. First V12 we've got, but yeah, hopefully sometime soon, it'll probably be one of the next videos you see, will be a little breakdown of this car. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed the trip. Thank you so much for watching this far if you have. And yeah, I absolutely love this car. It's gonna break my heart to part with it, but I can't afford to keep running it. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. Take care and bye.